Hello to everyone and welcome to another marine engineering video by Adventure Story Channel. Today this video, this is the part 3 of diesel generator overhauling. Diesel generator engine overhauling. And this overhauling is made every 16,000 hours. So the first overhauling will be in the 16,000 hours, the next in 32 and so on. The measurements that you will see today it is the measurement of piston ring grooves of clearances of piston ring sides. You will see also the measurement of the piston pin and boss, piston pin and bush, measurements of big end bore, measurement of big end bearing, measurement of cylinder liner, measurement of Timing gear. Next, we will see also the measurement of tappet guide, measurement of valve and guide, measurement of guide pin, yoke, and the measurement of the intake and the exhaust valves. You will see mostly here measurements and what we check on this overhauling. We will see everything detail. All the details will be explained with photos and videos. So don't forget to subscribe, stay tuned to Adventure Story channel, more interesting videos will be uploaded as soon as possible because I know you are thirsty for new material, for new information and it's a very nice way to discuss also and share our knowledge together. So let's start and see together this beautiful video which I made for you today. Let's go. First of all here you can see in time lapse I already start to make a lapping on the top of the cylinder liner. The grade of uh, grinding paste that I apply is 360 and also I use some oil on uh, with, with this paste together it's uh, very good because the oil make also a cleaning effect on the surface and all this paste is distributed better through the surface always check your tools uh, for any damages and always prior make a overhauling order the proper tools if they are damaged this tool that you see here is used also for the cylinder head lapping the same tool is used on the cylinder head and on the top of the cylinder liner you can observe the surface if it's proper when you see that your surface is clean and without any marks, you can feel with your fingers because our fingers can feel even microns that I have learned uh, reading some information on the internet. Our finger also is a special tool to realize and to see some details on the surfaces with our fingers we can feel also the roughness of the surface also each time I apply new paste I remove the old one, I clean the tool, I clean the surface also this is the correct way now as you can see I have a rack I clean very good the surface so any remaining parts, any dirty will be removed together as you can see this is the surface after the grinding and also we must check here the details of roughness around that means uh, in some hours later the piston uh, the cylinder liner must be replaced and here you can see the difference with the clean one and the dirty one this is the clean one is finished and ready this is number two number three so you can see 
and you must be observe really what is going on on the top maybe you have a lot of damage on the material and the cylinder liner must be replaced this is the tool here the grinding tool and this is how the grinding tool applies on the cylinder head we have also the flame rings which is located on the top of the cylinder liner and also here this is the new piston rings which have a mark on the top this is the side that you will need to place them with the mark looks on the top always be careful how you put your piston rings this is very important this is the piping for the cooling water which is attached to the cylinder head and this is a special tool for removement of uh, this is the for the bush of the fuel valve and this one these two tools is to the set the valve seat rings as you can see here this is the seat rings this is how they go inside this is for the exhaust valves seat rings of the exhaust valves and the other two is for the inlet valves the main difference exhaust valve seats and uh, inlet valve seats is the o-ring that they have and also the exhaust valves uh, seat rings can be removed by a extractor tool which we will see later as you can see here we have finished some of them the cylinder heads is ready for the pressure test some of them was replaced completely all the seat rings the inlet and the exhaust this is the bush of the fuel valve this is the rotocap which contains inside like bearings and springs which rotates the valves so the valves always change the position on the valve seat we have the springs valve springs and this is the valve holders they hold the valve without the valve falling down they lock the valve in the position and the spring will position also the valve at its proper normal position everything is calculated by the manufacturer also the springs must be checked for any cracks and here I try to sand with little sandpaper to see how the surface will be more shiny and to remove any roughness just to make a test to see if it's possible to make it more glide surface this metal is very very strong and sometimes it's a little bit difficult to grind with the sandpaper you will need a lot of time just imagine here the pressures will reach 140 bars 150 bars the combustion pressure just imagine what happened inside the engine also some of the seat rings the inlets and rings have some damage we will see later the main cause of that is for turbocharging washing when the engine is running and the turbocharging procedure the washing will take place uh, and if the load is very low that is the reason the water enters through the inlet side of the valves and this hammering effect of the valves will produce such uh, deformation of the metals of the seat rings here we have replaced all the valve seat rings as you can see in the photos 
This is the fuel valve guide, which is located on the center of cylinder head. And here you can see the damage from the washing of turbocharger. And also, as you can see here, the seat is burned. Here we have also the, our removing tool, which is a valve. And this valve, we make a welding. This is for the inlet valves, inlet seat rings, to remove them. As I tell, we have only for exhaust valve seats removing tool. For the inlet valves, you will need a old valve, which you will weld. The welding procedure must be very, very carefully to not make any remainings on the cylinder head after the welding because after the welding procedure there is some small pieces which is attached to the cylinder head and we will need also to check all the surfaces around we do not like any remain parts to stick inside our engine because through the pressure and through the movement of the piston they will for sure make some damage somewhere in some parts as you can see uh, in the most cases, after 16,000 hours of working of engine, it is sure that some parts will be replaced. And for sure all the O-rings, all the flame rings is better to be replaced and to not make any economy on this one because this is your generator, this is uh, the engine which will provide the power for all the ship. Here you can see the O-ring of the exhaust valve seat and also uh, when we make the pressure test we see that there is a small leakage and a small cry some drops from the exhaust valve seat rings so we apply a compound from the loctite brand which also have a sealing effect on these uh, valve seat rings also it's very important how you apply this compound inside and uh, on the surfaces so it will be better distributed. Here you can see this is our lapping table so you can turn your cylinder head and here I show how the valves is open and how they are attached. Always to try to grind at the first moment when you try to grind, use a higher load. And here I take some power from the foot to continue later. I tell that it's better to use a grade that is 360 at the beginning and then you will check if you need to use uh, less. Here we have 320 always start higher degree and after if there is difficult to remove use lower one and this is our oiler lapping cylinder head okay let's make a review we have made our overhauling we empty all the sun tank oil with air driving pump this is how it looks like before the drain. After the drain, there is some remain, some remainings from the oil. We only use clean oil to our hydraulic machinery, hydraulic pump. We use separated buckets for better identification of our cylinders. Also, we have removed all our fuel valves. We have closed all the holes to not go any dirt there. As you can see, it's a little bit messy there, but if you have prepared everything, it will be fine. Also, we have cover on the front, our fuel pumps. Also, we already place our cylinder heads for washing. We have removed them. We make a review a little bit. So this is 
after cleaning some tank here and also we start to clean our piston top covers so later we will proceed for a measurement of the piston clearances of the piston ring grooves the old piston rings will be removed we didn't find any piston rings broken also our crank will be secured because there is a hole on the crank and also we will measure here and we will see the measurement of big end bores this is how we collect everything everything is separated and also our old rings but all the measurements of the piston ring room will be made with the new piston rings here our piston is clean we have cleaned also the top of the cylinder liner as we thought already on the cylinder liner we will make three measurements in different depths later we will see that measurement later as i told this will be the biggest part of all the parts and whatever i have forgot here i will send it to the next part for so you will have uh, detailed information about that Okay, let's see also the beautiful photos. We have cleaned also the exhaust manifolds. Here on the left we have the water manifold. And also we will test the tightness of our piston crown. There is two bolts inside, as you will see later. Everything, a lot of the parts uh, have been bring to the engine control room. And also this is the measurement of piston pin boss and bush i use micrometers it's better to use micrometers it's always a good practice to calibrate your uh, calipers and your micrometers prior start any measurement because the mere measurement it's very very important uh, and also you will have to determine the faults of your measurement equipment. This is very, very important. This is how we measure with the micrometer. And here we tight the two bolts and we see if the bolts are moving. The tightening torque was 100 Nm no any changes and also there was not any movement of these bolts the book says that if these bolts are moving for the same reason they must be replaced with new one so here in our procedure we only check the tightness and we have made some marks to see if these bolts was turning at all here we have the measurement of connecting root measurement of big end bore for the measurement of that one you need to set these marks here and to use this internal micrometer and also the connecting root measurement of a big end bearing bore uh, you will need to apply a tightness you will need to tight without the bearings inside the bearings is removed uh, on the tightening pressure that is inside the engine here it's again measurement of the pin everything will be entered all the measurements will be matter entered in the inspection report for 16,000 hours overhauling maintenance which is supplied by hyundai and this overhauling is made for the engine H2132. Also here we have a micrometer for the measurement 
uh, very important is how you place your micrometers. It must be straight, it the surfaces must be cleaned, and always you must be measured in the same place if you like to have a good view of your measurement. On the prolonged measurements, in the next measurements, uh, the measurements for sure will be varied from person to person because we are not the same let's say if 1000 person will measure all will find different measures but of the most of the cases they will be somewhere together somewhere close here also is again the measurement of big and bore we have bring everything to engine control room this is how we tie it all the surface must be clean and also very good measurement is here prior you remove your big end from the engine it's better to ma make a measurement inside the engine and after when you connect everything back to measure again to see and to have this reference also here we have exhaust valve and we can measure the exhaust valve clearance here and also it's better to use a micrometer the normal values here is 6 millimeters and also here we have found a valve which was burnt at this point and as you can see the hole is big enough at the place where I have attached the caliper you can see the burned material from there it's missing a lot of material and here we measure we have measure of guide pin and yoke also be careful when you enter your filler gauges because you will use 04 or 03 for your measurements this is the tappet guide measurement and because your filler will be very very fine and they can break easily use them softly every every part must be checked here as you can see there is some balls some holes for the lubricating the lubricating oil make a journey around the engine it travels everywhere there is a lot of bores inside a lot of passages from where the oil is passing it's like a vascular system of human it's something the same and also we prepare our fuel injection valves we test them as we have seen on the overhauling procedure as you can see the spray it's so beautiful and the drops is so small that they mix with the air also we use the proper torque wrenches and also we will cover here our crankshaft this is how must be your sump after fully cleaning and also after finish everything all the assembly you must check again your sump for any parts falling down for everything and this is how it looks like when everything is ready the piston is inside already the holing honing have been done already we will speak in the part 4 about the honing, how it's the proper way to make a honing and what, why is there the reason that we make that. All the o-rings is placed, all the sealing rings, there is a sealing ring on the top which is seals between the cylinder liner and the cylinder head, a metal sealing ring and here we make our pressure test of 
the cylinder head. As you can see, we have sealed all the holes. Also, there is a special connection to the cylinder head on the bottom, like it is on the engine, and we connect to this pump. Remember that this kind of pump is working and increase the pressure which is the first pressure the first increase of the pressure will be done by the piping of the ship you will use the the water of the ship from one connection inside the engine room so the pressure will be increased to 10 bars gradually and will be stopped to the 10 bars and then from the bottom you can observe if there is any leakages or from somewhere else or from the fuel valve bush or from the inlet mostly from the exhaust valve because yes the exhaust valve contains o-ring and there the water is passing and also make a cool down on the seat rings so our cylinder head is tested here there is no leakage and we are happy that our job was done properly after remove all the parts we have a box where we contain all the tools for the testing of the high pressure We have a test of cylinder head. As you can see, I place the gauge to the box back again. Everything, whatever we remove, we place back again in the box. So we will not lose any special tools. And this table also is special. Remember that your special tools must be always kept in uh, one place where you have a good access you always know it visible so next crew when they will come they will not looking for that one and also try to keep them in good condition and easy accessible this is the most important when I come on board on this trip I find many tools that was not proper uh, in proper condition and we remove them we discard them as it is the proper uh, proper technique from ourselves and the good engineering practice because these tools are danger and they can uh, create a environment where you can damage yourself so always wear protective equipment as you can see I wear the gloves I wear a wearing protection and also we use the, our helmet when we uh, working in engine room environment but sometimes I understand it's a little bit difficult because the hot temperatures here you can see some drops which is uh, form formed the formation and here you have we have a leaking a small leaking as you observe here which separates in two streams which must be replaced and as i told before we use the compound for the sealing of that one and new o-rings must be always placed this is ju just to show you how the leaking look like maybe it will be drop or some small stream and also we check everything we check inlet seat rings we check mostly exhaust seat rings and the fuel valve guide because there is also cooling water passing inside in the middle also very important is to take the number of cylinder head that was overhauled so you will enter in the PMS system and also we will keep some notes about uh, each cylinder head we will 
have information what we replace on that cylinder head as you can see this is the number of potential cylinder head always gradually increase the pressure so you avoid to pass the 10 kilos in the middle this is from where fuel valve and fuel nozzle comes out it's very nice to test your cylinder head and to see what is going on if it will stand the pressure and this is the maximum pressure normally the cooling water works from 2.5 to 3.5 kilos but we test three times more just to have a advance of uh, a leaking also if there is uh, water passing to your engine or any moisture will be accumulated you can see it through the air blow that we make and this is the reason for what we make air blow we can see if we have a fuel leaking we can see if we have a water leaking we can see if we have oil leaking we can determine a lot of things as you can see there is also marking there is initial markings so uh, the engineers will be determine which valves going where the exhaust valves and the inlet valves and it's better to keep this initial initial markers so not every time to mark and mark and mark because it's visibly not so nice as a tail we replace only one valve complete we replace a lot of inlet seat rings we replace a lot of exhaust valve uh, seat rings the o-rings all the o-rings was replaced the surfaces of the cylinder head was lapping was lapped with a grinding paste always start with higher grade and then if you have a deep marks inside on the metal use a lower one use about 180 240 something like that or lower because if you lose if you use lower one after to make it fine again to achieve 320 360 you will need to grind more time but it's possible and also do not over grind because a lot of materials will be removed and also you do not like that one just be sure that the surface is fine and to test the surface you will need apply uh, through the valve seat with a pencil and then you will attach the valve and turn it through one side about one of four quarter of the turn so you will see if your pencil will be moved and will apply to the surface here we measure we have clean all the cylinder all, all the piston uh, heads and we measure the clearances of of piston ring grooves which is very very important they, they must be equal in case that there is not equal and you have uh, exceed the limit they must be replaced but as our measurement take place we didn't find uh, that we exceed the limits so these piston crowns and uh, piston grooves will be reusable again for next 16,000 hours very important is to check one by one all the grooves and to see if no, it is any filler, difference to confirm. to confirm the previous measurement Through the measurement, the we understand what is going on and we can see how the wearing procedure is uh, done through the time, through these thousands of hours of working and 
Through the experience you will understand where the measurements will be less or more because the engine is so designed, it's so loaded, so in some places the wear will be more and in some other places will be less. I have my assistant here, third engineer, he will enter all the measurements that uh, I have made, it's a very big help. And now we finish with all the measurements here. And also through the measurement, when you measure with filler gauges, you can feel also the feeling how your filler gauge attached inside in the groove. And this is very, very important to have this feeling and to be experienced on that one. So if you will understand the measurement and it's better from senior officers to new officers to share this uh, practice so they will be adjusted already and in the future will be know how to measure because they will be follow and they will take the place in one day of the senior officers and their the future this is the reason why we must learn our new engineers and we must share also the knowledge as you can see this is the timing gear this is the measurement yes of the timing gear and other gear so to take this measurement it's a little bit difficult it will be made by a dial gauge uh, and this measurement we will talk in detail in different video because now we will see most of the measurements here and we cannot analyze everything we will make a different video which we will have more detail we will go deeper and we will share also that one because it's very very important measurement After that, after the piston ring groove, we will measure the piston ring clearances. With the new piston ring attachment, we will take the measurements. As you can see, we will measure also with these small filler gauges inside the engine. We will measure the big end bearing and not only the main bearing, we will measure the main bearings and also remember when you measure that one be very very carefully because this filler will uh, have case that will broke inside and after that you will need to remove the main bearing must be very very carefully measured through the bottom like this you will have a access as you can see here, all the bearings must be measured. And I believe this part fill a lot of your interest about the overhaulings. In the next part, I will put all the details inside that I have left here. I will analyze this uh, video and also I like to tell you that these measurements was take at the same time when the other team of uh, engineers, the fourth engineer, the oilers, the third engineer, they was working on the cylinder heads, the cleaning, the checking and the separation of the spare parts. So I believe this video will cover a lot of your questions and will take you forward. To